welcome to New Europe Studios. With us today is Mr. Luigi Gambardella. He is the chairman of the board of ETNO, which is the uh, European Telecommunications Network Operat Operators Association. Mr. Gambardella, welcome. Thanks a lot for uh, your invitation. You are uh, representing an industry that is very important to all of us. We have grown dependent upon it. And uh, we have all of us, we have developed a sort of a love-hate relationship with it, especially when we are roaming. Um, do you believe that there will ever be a time that we will enjoy a digital single market in Europe, uh, sort of a European Schengen? Let me say that uh, we as uh, European operators, we are, much in, fa we are in favor uh, to create uh, a digital uh, and telecom uh, single market. And we believe uh, that uh, the, um, the integration of the market is needed. But uh, let me remind you that it's not our fault. We have today, we have in Europe, Europe is not one country. We have 28 member states. We have 28 markets, we have 28 regulators, we have 28 regulations, national regulations. What is needed is uh, to reduce uh, this level of complexity and uh, to, um, uh, to do, for example, what has been done in the US. Uh, several years ago, uh, the US market was a local one, was not a national market, and the US decided to create one national market. For them, obviously, it's been easy because they are a country. And they created one market with one regulator, and uh, this has helped a lot. The industry has helped innovation and has helped also um, uh, new investment. The problem that we have in Europe, as I said, is that we have too many uh, operators. So what is needed is uh, to reduce the number of operators. Uh, and uh, uh, what is needed is uh, to favor uh, investment and uh, what is more important, innovation. Sometimes uh, our feeling is that there is, in Europe, Europe, you have to understand that is the most regulated region in the world. And we should believe more in innovation than we do. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that uh with the existing, let's say, approach from the European, from the Commission. Uh, do you believe that these, all these questions that you raised are addressed? Well, let's say that uh, uh, this is a, a work in progress because uh, uh, we have to recognize uh, uh, the efforts of uh, uh, Commissioner Nelly Cruz in order to do something uh, in, the, in uh, what we consider the right direction, which is uh, the direction to create one digital and, and telecom single market. The problem is that we know that this exercise has to continue, will continue also with the next commission, because it's an exercise which requires time. This cannot be done suddenly. So, Mr. Gambarella, you mentioned uh, the need for innovation uh, you mentioned the need of a new approach to the whole question. Uh, obviously, there will be a new commission uh, after the elections. This, this commission, of course, will take into account what has already been achieved. Uh, recently, Commissioner Nelly Cruz has put forward a, pro a framework. It was presented as a solution, let's say, towards a European digital space. Uh, do you believe this is uh, moving towards the right direction? And do you have any proposals for the future? No, well, yes. Uh, uh, first of all, we, uh, we support the idea um, of the integration of, of a one and the creation of one uh, single telecom and digital market in Europe because we believe that uh, this uh, uh, will give us a lot of opportunity, could create a lot of opportunity for the consumer and for the operators and for everybody who will provide the services at European level. So we think that this is, is, is the right thing to do. Obviously, uh, then we have to discuss the single details and, uh, and uh, we have our own ideas how to improve further these proposals. Uh, as you are right, we uh, have to follow uh, two things in parallel. 
Uh, on one hand, uh, we are very focused and committed to follow the dossier that are today in the agenda of Commissioner Cruz. Uh, and uh, we want to follow this and we will uh, help in order that uh, this dossier will go ahead in what we consider the right way and, and, and putting also our, uh, some aspects that are important for us. On the other hand, we have, we have to start to think about the future because as you rightly say, we're saying, uh, this year will be crucial because uh, uh, we will have uh, the election of the parliament. Then uh, uh, I think by July, the new president of the commission should be nominated. Mm -hmm. Then the new president will create uh, the new uh, team. The new, the new team is and the new team will be uh, a certain point that we expect at the end of November, October, November, there should be hearings at the European Parliament. And so uh, they have to come up with their own ideas for the future. And uh, uh, what uh, we as a association of European telecom operators we want to help, we want to contribute in a, in a positive way. And uh, one aspect that we are uh, thinking about and we are working on it is uh, how the new agenda should look like. Because we have to think uh, from 2015 to 2020 and maybe it's needed to make some changes, integration to the agenda. Why? Because I make some example. In, when uh, this agenda has been done, has been done five years ago, uh, Internet of Things was not there. The cloud services were not there. So we have a lot of new technology and, and that has not been considered. So I think that, uh, and also what is important, it's important to focus and to create the next agenda on the consumer needs and starting on the consumer exactly. needs, on the services that consumer, European consumer, are asking for. And uh, uh, for example, I make always this example, uh, maybe that uh, uh, we should have as objective to connect all the cars in Europe. Maybe we should add in the new uh, future agenda an objective to connect smart TVs at home, to connect uh, uh, our kitchen. Mm -hmm. So I, I think uh, that we have to rethink our agenda also in a much broader way. I make uh, uh, two examples. Uh, let's think only the 3D printers. Yes. How they can change completely the, um, innovate uh, the industrial process. And what could, what could happen in Europe if we would develop 3D printer uh, and we would lead the process of the printer. The same is for, uh, in these days, uh, there are a lot of uh, press on uh, drones. Yes, absolutely. Which uh, I always say I would love to have my own drones. But this could really help. So we have to think also about the future. And, uh, and, uh, so, and we have also to be very ambitious. I would like, we would like to see a more ambitious Europe. Uh, you're absolutely right about the ambition. Uh, the thing is that during the last few years, uh, we had the development of uh, the development of existing technologies. We had the integration of different technologies that by itself, of course, it produces innovation. But we didn't have the development of something entirely new. Uh, do you think that something like this is lacking or if something like this is already on the way? I think uh, uh, that this is a very important question because, uh, and let me try to answer in this way. What you have to understand that there is a clear switch on the, in the ICT paradigm. What is important today and will be important more in the future, this is not only about communication, but this will be more and more about new services for a better life. Yes. So we will sell and we will allow others to sell services for a better life. And consumers will buy these services in order to, to do more things. Mm -hmm. And this is where we, we have to go, and this is the vision that Europe needs to have. We have already seen that uh, many users are using less and less mobile telephony as a telephone, and more as a computer, as a personal assistant, you know, for all kinds of applications and that kind of thing. 
so you expect this trend to continue, obviously. Uh, direct, let's say, voice communication will be less important probably in the future. And uh, so how, how do you see this uh, progressing? Well, this is a trend uh, which clearly will continue. And uh, uh, if you think only uh, what's happening with the, the fact that we are using Internet uh, mainly today also for video services, uh, it's clear that that's complete, it's completely changed. And I agree with you. And uh, the funny thing is that we use less and less our mobile phones. Yes. I myself, I receive less calls. I make less calls because I use other ways to communicate. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you are right, and, and this process will be even accelerated in the next years. Uh, a, a recent uh, uh, report, research on Ericsson, um, um, that we, we, we saw uh, recently, uh, say, says that the data traffic on mobile could uh, go from 2013 to 2019 grow of 10 times just to uh, just to give you yes. the idea the flavor of how much uh, uh, the traffic will grow and this is an exponential let's say increase. yeah but as i said uh, uh, we will use more and more uh, the communication for our new services mm -hmm. and services which will help our life does uh, the european union as you very well know is a very regulated market um, do you believe that, generally speaking, this regulation is helping or uh, a hindrance towards uh, no, to innovation and producing new products and uh, research and development? I think in your question there is already the answer. <laughs> is the answer. <laughs> Europe is the most regulated region in the world. And this is a problem. Because uh, 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 we cannot... Uh, con it's, it's not only through regulation that we can achieve more competition. We can achieve more competition through innovation also. We need to bet more on innovation. There are regions outside Europe which they bet on innovation. And, and in these regions there is less regulation, but there is more competition because there is more innovation. And the competition is based on innovation and not on regulation. Unfortunately, in Europe, we believe that all the problems can be solved through regulation. This is not the case. Mm -hmm. Also because the technology evolves rapidly, it's not poss possible this idea to try to regulate everything. It's completely wrong. So to put it in a nutshell, I, would, I, I suppose that if you have the proposal to make to the next commission, it would be, uh, one, to have less regulation, Second, to have more focused, the, the regulation that will remain will be more focused. Third, that uh, to listen to the proposal of the market. Am I yeah, correct? Yes, I think that uh, uh, we work for the market and we should work together with the consumer because we consumer always say that are the, they, are our, they are the kings. And uh, uh, in everything we do, and for this reason we we are thinking also to make some proposals in order to change the future agenda, because we would like to see a future agenda much more linked to the consumer needs. What is needed today is to measure the applications for the consumer rather than the number of fixed lines that are at home. This is a very old way to yes, measure to, our To sector. approach the, the, the question. Uh, there are, of course, some problems that perhaps need regulation in order to be addressed. For example, the protection of privacy. Yes. Uh, do you believe that this is a question, more a question of uh, regulation or of self-regulation? Well, uh, you know, the problem uh, uh, is uh, this. In Europe, uh, uh, the protection of privacy is a constitutional right. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and I think this is also a very good thing. And we have to be proud as European to give such much more, such more importance at the, the protection of privacy. The problem is that outside Europe, this is not the case. Uh, in the US, for example, the, the, the protection of privacy is only a matter of consumer protection. And so um, there are different uh, uh, regulations. What uh, is important is that uh, we protect the European consumers 
and we should be uh, very uh, care, we should take care of the fact that when an European consumer using, using internet and new technology is protect, the rights are protected in the same way independently if the uh, uh, company who provides the service is located in Europe or outside Europe. Mm -hmm. And for this reason, we uh, liked and we support very much the new regulation and the new directive that are under discussion because there is the concept of extraterritoriality. So this means that when someone provides service to European customers has to follow the European rules. Right. And, the, and the second aspect that for us is very important is level playing field. Uh, uh, some of these rules are applied only to telecom operators mm -hmm. and we believe that there is no reason when, it, when, you, when you have the same service, you offer the same service to the, same, the, to the customer, you should have the same rules. Mr. Bella, thank you very much for this interview. Thank you very much and congratulations you for uh, your, your initiative. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you.